also vary the designation of the male and female characters as they appear. Don't put all the male characters at the beginning of a text or story and bring in the female characters towards the end. There has to be a blend across from start to finish of both the male and female characters. If both characters appear at the beginning of a story, don't always start with the male character. Bring in the female character first at times also to show that women and men are more or less equal and not second to one another. Use the masculine and feminine forms in this case of a masculine plural. For example, when we talk of sportsmen or sportswomen, today we talk of sportspersons. We don't talk in terms of men and women. So again, try to bring in this gender-neutral terminology and vocabulary. Use a neutral form of title. As I said earlier, chairman of departments today, a woman could be a chairman. Now that's not possible, so you simply say chairperson of the department or simply say head of the department doesn't indicate whether the head is a man or a woman and again trying to use this gender neutral terminology is extremely beneficial pay attention to the meaning of words employed which must not ridicule demean or imprison a character in its role don't always make the woman seem low and down and the man character only be the strong, smart person. Women have brains too and can be smart too. Show a balance between the character meaning that you give through the words that you use in a text. In illustrations, check what are you trying to show. Are you trying to show a family picture with all the men sitting and the women standing or the men sitting on chairs and the women sitting on the floor, that does not give a gender balanced picture. So, looking at illustrations from different perspectives to see if you have a group, you can't have two women and 20 men because what you're trying to show is the men are in majority and so they will remain in majority and that's what boys and girls unfortunately will learn. So you want to look at illustrations from a very different perspective, making sure that the illustration itself is gender balanced. Choices may consistently convey bias. For example, if female characters are shown wearing traditional Pakistani dress while the men are more westernized, you don't want that. If you've got the females in the traditional dress, put the men in the shalwar kameez as well. There's nothing wrong with the shalwar kameez. You don't have to have men in jeans and t-shirts. After all, that's not our attire. We've borrowed that attire from elsewhere. And so, make sure that even in the dressing sense, the men and women are shown in a balanced format. Parity must be ensured, which means men, women, girls, boys in both text and illustration. Make sure there's a balance. Now, I'm not expecting you to count each name and each pronoun and each picture or diagram or illustration and make a 50-50. A 60-40 will be fine. A 35-65 will be fine. Somewhere close. But if you have 80-20 in favor of men, that is not a good sign. In all the different parts of the textbook, the lessons, passages, exercises, in the casting of the hero characters and minor figures, make sure that you have a balance. This balance is critical because without this balance, you will convey what we will call, through the hidden curriculum, the same stereotype that has been portrayed over the past years. That won't change unless we as authors of textbooks or publishers of textbooks make a concerted effort to make sure that our textbooks are gender balanced in all respects.